Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Um, I've got a custom build here, and um, that's it's old gaming spec. What do we got here? It's a Radeon HD 6770. Um, that looks like a second gen Intel, I think. P6T, yeah, I think that's second gen Intel. Um, OCZ power supply, Corsair XMS DDR3 RAM. Fairly nice computer, apparently it's not posting. So um, uh, let's turn it on and see what it does. Um, uh, that uh, wireless antenna is trying to fall off in my hands. Right, uh, power on the back, uh, power at the front. All right, we've got fans and we've got lights. Got a power button down there. And... Looks like we have no post. No, nope, that looks like it's doing a whole lot of nothing. So let's do a quick tour of the computer and just sanity check that everything looks right. Um, it's dusty, but not terrible. Fans are free. Oh. If that's it, this video is getting thrown out. Nope, and there, for a moment, I thought it was gonna be that easy. Okay, we should probably just reseat all of those RAM modules anyway. Um, and then we'll go through it. A couple of other things I'd like to do with this. The CPU cooler's the wrong way around, really. It's blowing in that direction. And of course, with these two exhaust fans here, the CPU cooler is basically fighting the case fans, which doesn't make any sense. You want this thing to be the other way around, so it's all blowing out the back of the case. But as it stands, it's having to fight two big, you know, a 120 at the back and a 140 at the top. So this setup makes no sense at all. Um, uh, so yeah, okay, let's turn that off again. Um, and I think we'll start with a memory reseating because I pushed that fella down, but we'll just make sure that those are actually all in properly. So I'm just going to open up all the memory banks. And I'm just going to do a visual inspection to make sure they're not covered in dust or anything. XMS Platinum. Who remembers that? There's a bit of dust down there. So we're in tri triple channel here, which was, um, and triple channel RAM was a, a brief phase that Intel went through. Can't remember how long ago. Again, it was, well, around second generation or so, I think. Maybe third. I can't remember. I think this is a P60 chipset because it's a P6T. And I mean P60 as the chipset, <laughs> uh, which if my memory serves me is, uh, I think it's second or third. Well, it might be third gen. I think it's second gen. Anyway, um, yeah, let's stick this back in and see what it does. It's all getting a bit old. I've no idea what CPU is in this. It's, um, uh, it, well, I don't know, I'm rambling. I'm really tired. I'm really tired today. It's the end of the day. I've got a headache. I kinda wanna go home, but this needs to be done. All right, let's see if it was that easy. Um, Let's see if it posts now. If it doesn't post now, we're gonna do a BIOS reset, which requires me to take the, um... oh, hello, our graphics card isn't plugged in. What the? Mm. Visual inspection, everyone. I spotted the RAM. I didn't spot that the graphics card wasn't plugged in. Yes, 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 yes. Let's try it again. I bet it's gonna work now. I bet that's just made a fool of me. No, it looks like we've still got nothing. Okay. I don't know whether I'm happy or sad about that. I'm sad about that because it's not fixed yet, but I'm happy because it means that my stupid mistake of not spotting that didn't mean anything. <laughs> right, okay. Power off again. Urgh. Let's go. Have we got HDMI on this thing? Ah, uh, we don't have onboard video. That's a pity. This was just before it was considered 
entirely standard to have an onboard video output. Like all of the Intels of this generation, well, sorry, all of the all of the Intel i series have onboard video controllers, but um, it wasn't until a little bit late into it, like you know, second, third generation onwards, probably around this time, where they said we're always going to put a video output on the motherboard because we can. Um, okay, that's that. Let's. I don't think it's going to be the graphics. Well, it could be the graphics card. Oh, I don't have a spare graphics card, do I? Oh, that sucks. Let's hope it not, it's not the graphics card. Otherwise, I'm going to have to open up my. Um, I'm going to have to open up the the, uh, the workstation and borrow my 960. Fine. Uh, I'm going to BIOS reset and then put the graphics card back in. And uh, we need a beep speaker in this as well. Yeah, let's get a beep speaker in it because. If I can get some beep codes, I'll know whether it's the graphics card too. Um, uh, it's all dusty and horrid in there. However, we don't. It doesn't matter if there's a bit of dust on some beep speaker things. Oh, I've just covered that up. Just plugged in the beep speaker up here on the front panel connectors. I never know whether to uh, keep the um, uh, HDMI capture visible or not when I'm doing this. Otherwise, I've got to keep turning it on and off again. It's kind of nice for you guys to be able to just see whether there's anything coming out of the computer or not, though, rather than taking my word for it. Uh, I'm going to give that a little bit longer. That's good enough. I'm impatient. It's probably only been a minute, but uh, it doesn't really take long to um, to clear the BIOS. I should probably test it sometime. Uh, we've got more dust there. I'm just going to keep... Clearing that out. I'm never certain exactly how much dust it takes to cause a problem in contacts, but you know, you never know. Get that plugged back in again. Get in there. I used to have a 6770 with a very similar cooler as well, I think. Uh, power. Power. No, this is still doing a whole lot of nothing. Okay, um, I tell you what graphics card I can test in it. This is cheating, but I've got this one. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'll give a million points, a million internet points to anyone in the comments who can tell me what I'm putting into this thing at the moment. <laughs> I know one person who will know the answer to this who may or may not be watching this video. Hi, by the way. I will do something with this graphics card. It's just on hand. Different graphics card, go. Go. There we go. I think I'm gonna start reaching for a different power supply. Yeah, I think it's time for a different power supply. Ugh. Here comes the Antec. Yep, okay, Antec's going in. I'm gonna change out to the original graphics card because I don't think it's that. Okay, Antec power supply, go! Oh, it beeped! Can we get a signal? We've got a signal! Beep, beep, beep! Alright. Uh, okay, well, it looks like we've got a bad power supply. Uh, which tallies with these old OCZs? They're kind of all getting a bit old and long in the tooth and dying. Um, as with a lot of things OCZ, they were good when they were new, but they just didn't age very well. Story of their life, really. Remember when OCZ were relevant? What a pity.
What a pity. Uh, okay, let's plug that one in and do a double test. So back over to the OCZ, OCZ power supply. Remember to like, share, and subscribe if you think I should call them OCZ instead of OCZ. <laughs> Cool, that's all plugged back in. Back over to here. Go. Yeah, okay, well, it looks like we've got a dead power supply. Okay, and one more time for good measure. We'll plug the Antec back in. Guys, the one thing I hate about this Antec power supply, it's been unplugged for like five, five or 10 minutes and it's still got a live five volt rail. If there's nothing draining that, it takes so long for the rails to drop off on this thing. Really annoying. It's not really very good for diagnostics, this power supply. The reason why I have it is just because whatever computer comes in, no matter what there is inside it, I'll have enough watts to power it. And I'll never be, I'll never be tempted to try and flog it onto someone which is why I have this obnoxious thing. But yeah, it's not great for testing, to be honest. Whoops. And I'm just gonna plug in the SSD as well, just to see if we can actually get a Windows boot from this. Right, that's everything we need to boot Windows. Swap the power cable over, power on, let's go. So we should actually get a boot to Windows this time. Uh, we won't because it's gonna complain about no keyboard. One moment. Yeah, that's a Windows boot. So the last thing that does is that just confirms that it wasn't a shorted SSD or something like that. Um, and so yeah, that's, that's done. Cool, okay, that's a bad power supply. Let's go and get a new one. Okay, so we're putting a new power supply in this thing. Uh, so the first thing we've got to do is strip out the old one. So um, I'm gonna take out the CPU cooler as well because I want to turn that around so it's facing in the right direction. So um, I, to be honest, I'm gonna gut this whole thing out, then I'm gonna clean it all out because it's full of dust, and then we'll just rebuild it all basically. Uh, some of the things I'm gonna change and some of them I won't. I mean, some of these wires are a bit, you know, flying leads everywhere, but there's no real power, there's no real cable management in this case. And so trying to do any kind of decent cable tidying job is gonna be an awful lot of work for very little return. So I'm not gonna go crazy with this thing. We're just gonna make good, basically. So uh, let's start by trimming out any cables that are power related. Whoa, bloody hell. Thermal paste been spread on this thing like it's a uh, chocolate sauce. Look at all that excess. Bloody hell. Well, better too much, th well, better too much than too little. Maybe just put on the right amount in the first place. Interesting, they've got a CPU power extension on this. How short is that? Your hello, she said. You didn't give people much for that, did you? Even a direct route, that's only just long enough. Hmm. Dusty boy. Okay, so what was it then? So, OCZ, 700 watts. And, yeah, it was fairly meh. 80 plus rated, but on a 700 watt power supply, only 550 watts on the 12 volt rails, which isn't great. In fact, that even add up? 550, 650, yeah, no, it does add up. But, yeah, that's... Um, 
that's not that's not a real 700 watts not that it matters i mean 550 is more than enough but car oh, look at the dust in that just uh dust or dust is what will kill you and whether it's you know whether the fan is in on the inside of the computer or whether you've got the fan sucking in from underneath your computer like you know i disagree with many of my comments about how to mount power supplies but whichever way you do it just make sure you keep an eye on the dust getting into your computer because this thing has just cooked itself you know the dust in there just speaks for itself you know i think we'll do a little bit of an autopsy on this thing when i'm done we'll open this thing up and have a look at the inside Oh, lots of SATA cables to nowhere here. I'm just going to unplug all of these for now and we'll just put in what's needed. This build is currently running just a single SSD and the DVD drive. And there was one, two, three, four SATA cables in there. So, uh, uh, yeah, I don't think we need that many. Uh, right, those front panel connectors. Yeah, those are okay. They can stay. Although I don't know about the, uh, that's a weird pin out on the front panel connector. Nah, whatever, it's an Asus board. Huh. And these fans are all Molex connector, which is a bit annoying. It's quite an old case, this, so that's not surprising. Um, we will be able to connect these back up, but that's all right. Okay, let's clean up that CPU a little bit, and then we'll hit the whole thing with the air compressor. Trying not to spread it all down the sides of the chip. And some alcohol just to finish off the top. Okay, so this is an i7-920, so it's first gen i7. Alright, that looks a bit better, doesn't it? Let's, uh, let's start putting this thing back together again. So... I've got a replacement power supply here. It's just a course there, nothing fancy. So we'll just drop him into place. And we're going fan side up on this uh, because there is no vent in the bottom of this case. So don't at me. Um, for the record, I have a video coming up that discusses orientation of power supplies because I get a lot of hate for mounting power supplies fan side up. Uh, and yeah, I'm actually planning a video that's going to go into a lot more detail about why I prefer having the fan pointing up and just other things and just general commentary on that. So stay tuned. I will be doing that at some point. However, on this one, there is no bottom vent on this case. So it's definitely going this way up, regardless of your, your feelings on the matter. Uh, right, I'm going to stick some screws in the back of this. And then we'll start threading those wires into place. Okay, so I'm going to thread these in by the heaviest wires first, get them squared away. And I'm just basically going to try and push everything to the back of the case. However, as I mentioned, because there's no real cable management as such in this thing, um, you know, this isn't really a fight we're going to win. Uh, but I'm going to do what I can with it all the same. As you can see, the uh, CPU cable is much, much longer on this power supply. That OCZ really had an unusually short one. However, this is from an interesting era where, um, <clears throat> where, case where having cable management in your case was kind of an emerging thing. So it was still quite common just to run all your cables just straight across the front of the motherboard when this thing would have been built, which might have been why they weren't particularly fussed. Whereas now, of course, these days, we want the length to be able to run around the outside. That much being said, of course, if you're in a case like this one that has zero power, uh, that has zero cable management on it, the best thing you can really do with your CPU power cable is, you know, in some cases, you can run it under the motherboard. 
Um, but that's a little bit sketchy, and you've kind of got to remove the motherboard to then change the cable, and it's, it's not a great setup. It's doable, it's just not great. Um, but what I often like to do is I'll run it up the bottom of the PCI Express channels like this, and I'll just tuck that down there for a sec, and what we'll find is that I can actually put these PCI cards back in on top of it, and it can just sit in that little gap underneath the the cards there. And that still just keeps it tucked down out of the way. So that way it's in place, it's out of the way, but you didn't have to go down the side. This is also very handy if your cable is too short, as the old OCZ was. And also, as sometimes we do see on some of the cheap power supplies, sometimes the cables are on the short side. They just, you know, they want to save every penny. Oof, that's how to connect. I had a bad time. Then. Okay, let's put our CPU cooler back on. So that's going on that way around. And I'm going to stick some Arctic MX4 underneath that. Cheap and cheerful thermal paste does the job nicely. I say cheap and cheerful, it's actually rated pretty good. There we go. And we've just taken those screws down to the stops. I have not graunched it up. I've literally just gone to bite tightness with this screwdriver which has very low torque on it. You don't need to grunge your CPU cooler screws down. Okay, and let's stick the fan back on that. It's a little bit grubby but I to get this dirt off I'd have to go at it with like cleaning fluids and stuff like that. And I don't have time for that. So this thing was mounted the wrong way round and I think the reason why the builder had got this thing the wrong way round was I think they didn't realize that this is a reverse bladed fan. Um, so the general rule of thumb with fans are the general rule with fans is that they always blow toward the label. Um, so if you look at this one, it's got directions. It says rotation, airflow going that direction. So the airflow blows toward the label. And we can confirm that because if you look at the curve of the fan blades there, you can see that the fan blades are concave toward the direction of airflow. So they are, they are concave to grab that air and scoop it down and blow it out the back toward that label. And so likewise, there's the label of this fan. So it's quite possible the system builder thought, oh, okay, it's just a strange fan it blows that direction. So they had it mounted that way around, probably thinking it was going to blow out the back of the case, which is the direction of airflow you want in this setup. So we've got an exhaust fan there and an exhaust fan there. So we want the CPU cooler to be blowing toward those exhaust fans and evacuate everything out the back of the computer. However, it's a reverse bladed fan. So that much being said, it's got another label there. That's kind of interesting, but the point is, again, if you look at the if you look at the blades on here, you can see that the blades that it's not as pronounced on this one, but they are curved in that direction. So uh, the this fan blows in the opposite direction to how a normal fan would blow. It's reverse bladed, and we've seen that there are a couple of coolers out there that have reverse bladed fans. The Intel stock coolers um, are reverse bladed as well. Um, so you know they're out there. They they do exist. So let's just pull that round and that plugs in down there. Let's take that around the back, I think. There we go, that'll do. So by turning that around now, we've drastically improved the airflow across the CPU cooler because this fan is no longer having to fight against two much larger fans right next door to it. Those are all working together now to draw air from over here through the CPU cooler and out the back of the case. Job's done. Right, uh, I think that's ready to turn on. Everything's plugged in. Uh, let's give it a quick post test. All right, there's our post. That's all hunky-dory. Yeah, BIOS is reset, that's fine. 
Let me just grab the keyboard for this and give that an F1. Excellent. That all looks great. So last item of business then. Let's pop open the cover of the old power supply and have a quick look inside. Okay, let's crack this bad boy open. I wonder if we can see exactly where it died or not. I'm not sure. It might not be visible quite often when, especially by virtue of the fact that this thing still turns on and the fan spins, there probably won't be anything to see except a crap ton of dust. But I don't know. It might be interesting. Hmm. Ugh. Oh my word. Oh my word. Look at that. Oh, that was worth it for the video, wasn't it? Well, there's your problem. Poor thing. The only thing that's not completely... The only area that's not entirely chocked full of dust is there. And that's because there was a blanking plate across there. Power supplies often have these bits of plastic across a bit of the fan to direct some of the to direct the airflow toward the back of the power supply, because um, uh, otherwise some of the airflow would just be going straight out the back there. And I presume they've done tests and they found that it's more effective to block off part of the fan. I don't think that's effective personally, but I'm sure they know a lot more about it than I do. However, yeah, oh man, poor dude. It's it's like a it's like a dirty coal snowdrift. Uh, it looks like a volcano erupted all over it. Let's uh, there's our main filter cap in there, and just ugh, 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 ugh. This I'm 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 just this is just ugh, ugh, hmm. Well, yeah, I, 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 we don't, we don't need to, we don't need to go any further than this. Everything in there is cooked. It's, it's like a little fluffy cloud, only the cloud is carcinogenic, and where it shouldn't be, and just, uh, uh. Thanks for watching, it, everyone. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.